those years, the German groups were working with the lawyers to get the lab over there and all right. that other stuff is going on. And right. actually, they sent representatives from Switzerland over there to um, talk to these people to release the goods. So by that time, things shifted, and I got kind of burned out on all of this stuff because... Yeah, it sounds like you went through a lot, all right? Oh, my God. And, and, then, and, then, and then you're thinking uh, you're going to come back to Canada, and they're going to arrest you and throw you in jail. That's what I'm told. So I took so, a chance of coming back here, and I met with the reps there the, from the government, and um, didn't get thrown in jail. I got so angry there with this. I had a double garage full of stuff to the ceiling of all the test equipment. And basically, they wanted me to put it in full operation again. Oh? And I, I thought, that's what I thought, too. I thought, this is odd. This is extremely strange. I just disobeyed that order, and I sold everything off to the local ham radio operators. And what I couldn't sell off, I dumped into the scrapyard. Are you a ham, by the way? Oh, I'm fascinated by ham. I don't have a license, but um, you're not I'm a licensed ham. Fascinated okay. by ham and vacuum tube technology. <laughs> Love the stuff. I'm a surplus nut. Are you? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I can tell from the video when 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 all your equipment was there that we do have a video showing your lab. It's kind of a dark video. Yeah, but okay. uh, you you can see just. Rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of what looks like military surplus gear. Oh, I love it! I went on the buying spree when I got my inheritance. I went to, I think, about twenty thousand dollars of stuff from Fair Radio Sales in Ohio. Ah, so you had a little financial help to do all this. Well, people keep throwing me chunks of money once in a while. I had Jap Japanese people throwing me bits of money. Uh, um, England, um, Germany. To keep me just floating after I'd returned from um, uh, Germany. Well, I sure would like to know uh, if your field would affect a timepiece and uh, what kind of effects it would have on uh, biological organisms. You never tried cats, dogs, or mice, or... No, it goes against my religion, that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. All um, right. Listen, what I would like to do is, mm -hmm. in the next hour coming up, uh, by now, I think enough people have seen your videos uh, so that uh, we can take some good, intelligent questions f for you from the audience. H how would that be? Sounds like fun to me. All right, good. Then in that case, here's what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask that those of you who have seen the still photographs and those of you who have seen the videos on my website uh, call up. And it, it's really one of those things that you've got to see. I mean, you have just got to see it. That's all there is to it. So if you've seen it, and if you have a question for John Hutchinson of the John Hutchinson or the Hutchinson Effect, pick up your telephone and let's hear from you. Once again, John Hutchinson. And uh, John, yeah. you, you never did... Uh, you you did levitation, uh, but you but you never did personal levitation. You never, <laughs> or did you? Me personally, fly up in the air? No, no. Okay, no. no. I, I would love to. That's you know a kid's dream, but uh, no. I, All right. Well, uh, somebody named uh, Frode F R O D E in uh, Trondheim, Norway, says Art. I corresponded with John mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, get uh, get to the part. Uh, of levitation, he did that too. So when he means levitation, he means that you were able to suspend objects in midair. Well, yes, like that's one of the effects is um, objects being suspended in midair. Yes, well, oh. people can actually just take um, a photograph of it. Okay, um, let me uh, go to the phones now, and I have no idea what we're going to get, John. We'll see. First time caller line, you're on the air with John Hutchinson in Canada. Hello. Yes, this is uh, Brian calling from New York City. Yes, sir. Hi, yes, uh, I'm a former Persian Gulf uh, veteran, and uh, we had to go through obstacles, and I was in a tank, an M1 Abrams. Do you think that the Hutchison field could be used as a weapon which would uh, discombobulate the tanks, uh, you know, rip the metal apart, and uh, levitate the tanks, causing all kinds of confusion? Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Of course, we saw some of our more conventional smart weapons uh, levitating tanks, but that was immediately following large explosions. Uh, John? Yeah, I suppose in that area it could be used as a weapon. I wish not to see that happen. I wish to see it used um, as advanced space propulsion. Actually, NASA 
1997 had my the Hutchison effect at the Advanced Propulsion Workshop by Mark Millis. Uh, I think it was presented well, but weaponry, I'm not, you know, I'm not into that. Yeah, that would be our military, and as you pointed out, uh, you do like to talk publicly and show publicly what you're doing. Yeah. And the military, is. when you get involved with them, they don't like that at all, do they? No, that's why I refuse many contracts. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Wild Card Line, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. Hello. Hello, Art. This is Bob from Los Angeles. Yes, sir. Yes, I've been following Mr. Hutchinson's experiments for about ten years now, and I've been trying for five years to get him on your show. I, I thought he was sort of ended up like Tesla hit by a car on a street corner. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you're going the right way uh, there um, uh, with uh, not going after the mil military aspect and, uh, you know, um, you know, supporting life. I mean, I was thinking that this is basically a propulsion system for a craft that could virtually lift it, um, leave this planet. I'm thinking that our atmosphere is thinning so much year by year that eventually we may need what you have designed to leave this planet and go elsewhere and probably end up saving life on this planet. You're aware of that, right? Yeah, I'm aware of that, and it also could be used for the control of all of the radioactive waste. There's some experiments there that I did years ago that made radioactive material inert and also could help uh, sweep the atmosphere and make a, a resurrection of an environment. That's what I like to see happen also with this kind of technology. Yeah, that's true. Have you, have you been hypnotically regressed? Because there's a lot of people with limited who haven't been to Harvard universities and stuff who have came up with incredible inventions such as yourself. And I believe myself that I've worked it with Lockheed, and uh, my education wasn't so great, but I've came up with incredible ideas that, that are just beyond my abilities. I don't know how it happens. It happens to other people. But the only what happens is somehow it got in your mind. I think it, if you could be hypnotically regressed to get the full aspect of what you know out of your mind, because I believe what's in your subconscious is dripping, you know, drifting over to your conscious. That's what's, what, how you're doing this pretty much. Do you, do you believe uh, hypnotic regression? Maybe somehow this got in your mind somehow. Do you ever think about that? I have thought of many areas why I'm like this, why I have this in drive to do these things, and why every, anything I need seems to come to me for me to perform this. And do you think that uh, this Tesla technology is actually tapping into zero, what's called zero point energy to do this? Without a question, yeah. Uh -huh. Without a, you know, without a doubt. Uh -huh. Um. Because it, it gives all the energy you need to to perform the effects. You can't. You can have a you can have a terawatt of radio frequency stuff being poured out. It wouldn't do anything, except maybe heat up a metal sample at um, a little bit at uh, maybe twenty feet. But again, it's a combination of these fields that seem to produce something else. And right, right. In every case we've heard with these sorts of effects, it's been these exact combinations. Um, uh, there was a connection to Area 51 with Lockheed Martin. What was that all about? Well, my friend who, um, Nick Cook of James Defense Weekly, chief aviation editor, um, went into into the United States to check out why um, so much money is using to be used for the Black Budget Project. I think the show was called The Billion Dollar Question. So he did many interviews until he hit extremely lucky at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works interviewed uh, Boyd Bushman, who had copies of my tape and showed them. And this I didn't know was on television. I was getting phone calls the next day. And people saying, gee, that's, you know, that's incredible stuff, what's going on there. You should contact these people and all this and that, And um, which I didn't do. I did email. I tried to email the Skunk Works people for Boyd Bushman, but I didn't uh, get through, I didn't get a response. Then later on, just um, about a month or so ago, Nick's um, book came out explaining everything. And I'm reading this book. I'm featured in the book. I'm reading stuff that I never even knew it transpired with all the CIA guys and all the defense <laughs> contractors and Boyd Bushman. Yes. And I just learned a week ago uh, that there's, um, there's a, a court fight between Bushman and Lockheed Martin over something. Well, how does Area 51 get into this? Area 51 is, um, I believe, personally, from bits and pieces of stuff I hear, is for advanced propulsion technology research. So do you think they might be testing uh, 
the essence 